Here's his sister. What's your name, dear? Carolyn Nelson. Where are you from, Carolyn? From High Point, North Carolina. From High Point. What yeah. God do for you, dear? Oh, I had a, a case of rheumatic fever for about 25 years. Rheumatic fever? Yes, 25 years. About a year ago, you know, my heart was 99 and 9 tests two years ago. I come back and forth to Chapel Hill Memorial Hospital. Oh, thank you. Just go right on. Oh, thank you. Oh. 25 oh. years suffering with thank rheumatic you. fever. Back and forth from High Point to Chapel Hill. Oh, thank you. This is Thanksgiving Day. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Jesus. About a year ago, at the Holy Ghost Revival, the preacher said, somebody here with a heart condition, I want you back on the Martin night. God going to hear you 100%. And I can say tonight that I'm healed. Oh, I thank you, Lord. Oh, I thank you. Oh, I thank you. Oh, I thank After 25 you. years. Oh, I thank you. Well, go ahead and thank the Lord with us. Go ahead, honey. She sure don't look like no rheumatic fever, does she? Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Just turn around and look at somebody and say, Do it again, Lord. Uh, come here, Mama. What's your name, dear? My name is Lavinia Davis. Lavinia Davis? Yes. What God do for you, dear? He healed me from the high blood pressures. And then he healed me since I've been here for catching my hip. Glory to God. I catching the hip? Yes, right. Praise the Lord. I couldn't hardly move. And the Lord has just done a blessing to me all anyway. Praise the Lord. And I want to just give him praise for it. Praise the Lord. Because I know he's my healer. And he's been my healer for many, many years. I can say all my life, glory to God. I've never been sickly much. But I do know he healed me from the high blood pressure. Well, I'm so happy that he's done that for you. Can you give the Lord a big hand for her, everybody? Thank you, Mama. Praise God for those testimonies. Now the message. And if you will, let me begin reading at the second chapter of Acts. Every Pentecostal preacher worth his salt knows this second chapter of Acts. First verse, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, everybody say suddenly. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled everybody say filled Keep that word locked in, your brain cell. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven at that known time. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, listen, because that every man heard them speak in their own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? 
And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judah, Judea, Cappadocia, in Pontus, and Asia. I mean, all the known nations, there was a representative there of every one. Phrygia, Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya, about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews, and proselytes. Everybody. Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed. They were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? They marveled at what they heard. Every one of these countries that I have read, it's reiterated in the second chapter of Acts, including the Arabians, Arabs, Jews, Asians, Romans. They heard the wonderful works of God coming from illiterate men who just received the filling of the Holy Ghost. Everybody say Holy Ghost. Now we try to dress him up and we call him the Holy Spirit. But he's Holy Ghost to me. Holy Ghost and fire. Tonight's Holy Ghost night. Now let me go on with this because it's such a beautiful rendition here. What meaneth this? Something supernatural was taking place. These were languages that were not learned in the university. These were uneducated men and women. A hundred and twenty people in the upper room waiting for the Holy Ghost to come. And something supernatural took place that amazed everyone that was in divine presence. And the only thing they could say was three words. What meaneth this? What's this all about? What does this mean? Others mocking. They had mockers back there do just like they do today. Others mocking said, listen, these men are full of of new wine. They're inebriated. The New Yorkers would say, they're drunk. Soused. But Peter, I can spend all night on this. Here's a man that denied Jesus three times. He denied him. Just when Jesus needed him the most. He said, I don't know him. And it's always a woman. She said, ah, your speech betrays you. You sound like one of them. So he had to change his speech. So he started cussing. People standing by said, no, nah, he ain't one of them. His disciples don't talk like that. Three times he denied him. And three times Jesus confronted him after the resurrection. And yet, and I love this, Jesus picked him up. Filled him with the Holy Ghost. And he became the main spokesperson on the day of Pentecost. And I say all this to encourage you. I don't care where you've been. I don't care where you came from. 
I don't care what kind of sins you have committed. I want you to know that Jesus will love you into the kingdom of God and fill you with his spirit and he will use you like he used Peter. Can you say praise the Lord? Isn't that refreshing? Now Peter stands up while the people were mocking. He's standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. Listen to me, is what he's saying. For these men and these people are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. It's nine o'clock in the morning. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Everybody say all flesh. And your sons and your daughters. All you women say daughters. Aren't you glad he included you? Men have been trying to exclude you, but God has included you. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, plural, that means you women, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come and it shall come to pass that whosoever Everybody shout, whosoever. whosoever. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Pardon me while I shout. Hey, I'm so glad he included me. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as you yourself know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God you have taken by wicked hands you have crucified and slain whom God hath raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. I'll stop there, right smack in the middle of the sermon. I want you to bow your hearts with me and let's pray together, if we will, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the reading of these holy scriptures. And I pray that the anointing of God will mantle every one of us in divine presence. Hide your servant behind the cross. Let us see no man save Jesus. Holy Spirit, quicken these lips of clay. Quicken our minds together and give us the mind of Christ. Touch our hearts so that we can retain the truth. Let the truth of God go deep into every spirit. And let every one of us be doers of the word and not just hearers only. I come against every distraction of the devil that would hinder God's people from receiving this miracle. Let this be the greatest night that we've had. 
Fill believers with the Holy Ghost. Lord, those that you have filled that have been emptied out, refill them. Send a fresh filling of the Holy Ghost and fire and set us on fire and use us in this last day. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody shouted amen, amen. and amen. amen. Turn around and look at three people and tell them, say, you're going to get a miracle tonight. 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 Somebody tell me I'm going to get one. Well, glory! I am reading from the second chapter of Acts, and I am reading from the 15th verse. For these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Now I use this cluster of verses as my text. You that are listening by means of radio... If you will just zero in on that 17th verse. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And I want to deal with these words and I want to talk to you tonight about the power of Pentecost. I'm not talking about a prayer language. We have reduced the power of Pentecost to a mere prayer language. This is more than a prayer language. I want the power of Pentecost in my life. I want the power of Almighty God to charge me I want what they had on that crucial day when Jesus told them to go and wait for the promise of the Father. And he said, you shall receive power. Everybody say power. power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in Judea and all Samaria and then to the uttermost part of the earth. Peter the apostle is translating the mind of God to the people that were amazed at what they were listening to. This story comprises three great events. And if we can put this together in a nutshell tonight, he, Peter, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, is talking about the departing Lord. In this first chapter, the writer of the book of Acts talks about the departure of Jesus. When he leaves his disciples, his last words were, go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. 120 of them. Paul the apostle writing to the church at Corinth says that he was seen after the resurrection of above 500 people. How come there were only 120 in the upper room? What happened to the 380? Are you listening to me? Only 120 believed what Jesus told them that you shall receive power not everybody and I know this is going on radio not everybody believes in speaking with tongues but I don't mind telling you I am a tongue talking preacher 
I speak in tongues. I am filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm Pentecostal from the top of my head to the bottoms of my feet. Every hair on my head is Pentecostal. And if it wasn't, I'd yank it out. Are you getting the message? I am not ashamed to be called Pentecost. In this generation we're living in, we've changed the word Pentecost to charismatic. That sounds like a transmission in a Buick. I am Holy Ghost. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Everybody say fire. fire. We have a picture here of the departing Lord and the returning Lord. When Jesus leaves his disciples, they see him as he ascends into heaven. This was not a quick exit. But here he is leaving them. And they're gazing up at him while he is departing the planet earth. And they forgot the words. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I've got to go away so I can send the other comforter to you. And that's the Holy Ghost. And he can't come until I go and send him to you. So go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. And when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you are going to receive power. That the works that I do shall you do also. And not only these works shall you do, but greater works shall you do because I go to my Father. Can you shout amen? amen? Jesus is taken out. And no sooner when he leaves their consciousness, their eyes can no longer see him, all of a sudden two men are standing by them in white apparel. And you know what I believe it was? While Jesus was going up, he said to those two angels, go back and tell them. Tell them what? That this same Jesus that you see taken away is coming back again in the same manner. Here he's talking about his departure and he's talking about his return again. Are you listening to me? I've come to Coney Island to tell you Jesus not only came off of that cross and resurrected from the dead and ascended into heaven but I want you to know he is coming back again I believe in the rapture of the church I believe at the sound of the trumpet the dead in Christ are going to rise first and we that are alive and remain we shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the clouds of the sky hallelujah so here we have the departure of Jesus, the coming of Jesus, and then sandwiched in between, we have the coming of the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. This is not a tongue. Hear me, all you Baptists out there listening to this radio broadcast. Pentecost is not a tongue. The Holy Ghost is not a tongue. The Holy Ghost is the divine third person of the Trinity of God. He's just as real as the Father, just as real as the Son, Jesus. And this is, Je this is the Holy Ghost, the third person of the Trinity. Can you shout amen? amen? And the Holy Ghost is going to fulfill the work that Christ left. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. And he's going to prepare the way for the greater work which Christ himself is coming back to complete. The great theme of the book of Acts is the Holy Spirit coming and the power which he brings with him. It's not a tongue, but it's a power that he brings. When you get the Holy Ghost, he gives you power to do the works of Christ. Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also. You'll heal the sick. You'll cast out devils. You'll raise the dead. This is that which was promised by the prophet Joel. And I'm going to have everything that he promised me. Raise your hands and shout praise the Lord.
You know what got Ralph out of this thing? Power! Power! That'll sit there. Don't that look good? I like to show that off. That's what the devil did. But when you see him over here jumping and shouting, that's what the power of the Holy Ghost did. It delivered him. It set him free. Hallelujah. It gave him his speech organs back. He's living a normal life now. He has a brain. He's going around the world telling people that Jesus is not dead, but he is alive, still doing today what he did 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. So you see, I got to deal with three events. The departure of Jesus. The coming again of Jesus. But sandwiched in between the advent of the Holy Ghost. The third person. Now, you know what I like to think about? Jesus was only here for 33 years. The Holy Ghost been here 2,000 years. Mm. Jesus was limited because he had flesh like you and I have. Are you listening to me? But the Holy Ghost has been living with us for 2,000 years. And he has taken up residence on the planet earth. And you know where he's been living? In me! Somebody shout in me. My God, I love this. I am the temple of God. You are the temple of God. Look at somebody and tell them, I am the temple of God. God lives here by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I am reading from the second chapter of Acts. And as a text, I've been reading from the 15th, the 16th, and the 17th verses. But I just want to read a portion of the 17th verse. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Thank God I know I'm still young because I got a vision. You that are dreaming dreams, you're getting old. But thank God you still have the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Can you shout amen, somebody? Hallelujah. I want you to consider three things. First of all, the event. The, this event, the advent of the Holy Ghost coming, its magnitude is stupendous. It's important. And it's far-reaching because of the power that accompanies it. The event of the Holy Ghost. What was it? Let me use an illustration concerning David. David and Solomon's reign. David came to lay, to lay the foundation for the work which Solomon followed to fulfill what David had established as the foundation. Solomon fulfilled it. When David made the preparations, he passed out of sight. And Solomon came to complete the work and to rear that splendid temple in Jerusalem, Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry has prepared the very way for the building of his church. And Jesus departed out of the way so the Holy Ghost could come and build the church. Who is the church? Somebody, no, don't say we are. Say I am. I am. Bring it down home personally. I am a part of this church. 
Hallelujah. Thank God Jesus died for me on Calvary. He carried my sin. He carried me to that cross. When Jesus died, Shambach died. When Jesus was buried, Shambach was buried with him. But thank God the grave couldn't hold him. Three days later, he come out of that grave. And when Jesus came out of the grave, Shambach came out with him. Now it's no longer I that liveth, but it's Christ that lives on the inside. Can you shout amen? amen. Now the Holy Ghost has taken up the dwelling place. And he gives me power. Hallelujah. A lot of people are bashful in saying they got power. I've got power. I'm not a healer, but I got more power than the devil has. My elder brother stripped the devil of every power that he had. Hallelujah. He said, the works that I do, shall you do also. He's pointing to you, church. I used to pastor a church out in western Pennsylvania. And I had fellowship with all the other denominational preachers. And I had one of those pastors say to me, Brother Shambach, he said, man, I'd love to heal the sick. I said, why don't you do it? He said, I tried it, but they don't get healed. He said, why is it? You can lay hands on them and they get healed. And I lay hands on them and I bury them. Well, I said, since you're a pastor and I'm a pastor, I'll lay it on you. I said, the very thing you preach against, that's the Holy Ghost. You don't want anything to do with this talking in tongues, but this is where you get the power from. And I said, you mark it down. One of these days, God's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. And that's the day that we're living now. Hear me, all you Baptists. Hear me, all you Methodists. Hear me, all you Lutherans. All of you Roman Catholics. All of you Jews. I don't care who you are. All of you atheists, hear me. God's going to make a believer out of you. He's going to pour out the Holy Ghost on all flesh. Hallelujah. Oh, looks like I pulled on your chain here today. All flesh. That means black flesh. That means white flesh. That means yellow flesh. That means red flesh. Can you shout amen? That means female flesh. That means men flesh. I don't care whether you're a male or female. God said he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. The young men are going to have vision. The old men are going to win now. Woo-wee! Man, that makes me want to hug. Turn around and look at three people and say, Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. I said, Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. He's building his spiritual temple. He's taking up residence inside of me. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I know you. I know you don't like it, but I'm going to preach it. Some of you are going to have to get up and go out of here, but you can mark it down. He's going to pour it out on all flesh. Go ahead and run, boy. I want you to know God's going to give it to you. Holy Ghost and fire. Pentecostal fire. My God, go ahead and run. Hey! My, 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 my. We got this whole thing backwards. When the Holy Ghost come, a lot of you Christians believe that it was a tongue that came down. It was cloven tongues like as a fire. It sat on the heads of everyone in that upper room. Thank God I got the Holy Ghost and fire. I didn't get any icicles. I got some fire. It's like fire. Shut up in my bones. My God, it makes you shout. It makes you want to run. It makes you want to praise the Lord. It's the fire of Almighty God. The third person. 
the descent of the deity to this globe, the coming of the third person of the Godhead on a visitation for 2,000 years on this planet Earth. The Holy Ghost is in control. Raise your hands and shout praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I wish this was television so you could see it. You that are listening to this on radio, the Holy Ghost is coming alive in the hearts of God's people under this tent. They're realizing that we have the third person of the Godhead living on the inside of us. My God, the Holy Ghost is real. The Holy Ghost is alive. And he's doing today what he did 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. somebody somebody shout yes hallelujah the power of the Holy Ghost Holy Ghost is here right now yeah Holy Ghost is here right now yeah Holy Ghost is here right now yeah Holy Ghost is here where the Holy Ghost is here right now yeah Holy Ghost is here right now, yeah. Holy Ghost is here right now, yeah. Holy Ghost is here. Holy Ghost is here right now, yeah. Holy Ghost is here right now, yeah. Holy Ghost is here right now, yeah. Holy Ghost is here. Holy Ghost is here right now, yeah. Holy Ghost is here right now, yeah.
the Holy Ghost is here. I said the Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. 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 I guess you ain't gonna let me finish this. Well, go ahead and shout. I got grace. My, 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 my. feel this thing all over me I refuse to compromise the power of the Holy Ghost this is what the world's looking for I told you about that little woman that came and threw that husband down at my feet lying in a sheet do what God called you to do I believe it's about time we get back to those days God called us to do the works of God. He said, heal the sick. Cleanse the leper. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely. There's the word. Freely. You received it. Now freely give it. I had a lady here in New York City. She come to me one day and she said, pray for my son that God will fill him with the Holy Ghost and save him. I said, if God does it in that order, your son's going to blow up. You can't put this new wine in old bottles. You got to get the man saved before you get him full of the Holy Ghost. This is the temple of God. This is the number one prerequisite. You must be born again. You gotta have a new vessel. You gotta have a new wine skin. 
so you can hold the new wine of the Holy Ghost. You put new wine in old wine skins and they'll burst. And that's why the Holy Ghost can never come on a sinner. It's got to come on one that's saved. One that's been separated from the world. And that's what it's all about. If you're here tonight and you've never experienced Christ in your life. You don't know what it is to be born again. Hear me. This is the greatest miracle. Now you don't have to wait. You don't have to go to Jerusalem. You can get it in Coney Island. You can get saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost all at the same time. Can you shout amen? But you got to be emptied out of self so you can get full of the Holy Ghost. Some of you just got a touch of it. Right? Say, I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Nah, you just got a hold of something. That's all. I want to see you get full of the Holy Ghost tonight. I want God to use you in a supernatural way tonight. All flesh. How many of you are a candidate? How many of you got flesh? Some of you ain't even here tonight. You're dead and don't even know it. You're the ones I'm after. You need to come alive. You need to get saved, washed in the blood. I don't care how many times you tried or how many times you failed. Hear me. Jesus Christ is coming back. Now if that Holy Ghost, that third person of the Trinity has been here 2,000 years, we ain't got long to go, folks. This is the final wind-up. Bible says, he that is filthy, let him stay filthy. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. This is it. I mean, you still, thank God, grace is still being poured out. Amazing grace. He wants to come into your life. But he's not going to come into somebody that don't want him. You must invite him. You make the first step. He said, he or she that comes to me. I will in no wise cast them out. The invitation is open to the whosoever will. That means you. That means me. Every one of us. If we'll just take the first step. You say, preacher, I try, but I fail. Who hasn't? Everyone in this tent failed God. Peter failed God. Became one of the great apostles. That's why he got full of the Holy Ghost. Saul of Tarsus was killing Christians, yet he planted the cross on the crossroads of every continent in the known world. God used him. You see, I've been hooked on drugs. That's who God's using today. Church folks are too busy playing church. So God's raising up the sinners right off the street. Drug addicts, alcoholics. Street walkers, harlots, God saving them, washing them in his blood, cleaning them up, turning them around, filling them with the Holy Ghost, and they're going out to do what God called them to do. These signs shall follow the believer. I'm not going to count the ten. I'm not going to count the three. You want God to come into your life? Listen, up. he wasn't ashamed to be stressed out on Calvary. They suspended him between heaven and earth. They made a show of him openly. The Jews didn't kill Jesus. Well, put that on them. That Roman soldier spear didn't kill him. Who killed him? You did. I did. Because of our sin. He loved us so much. He came for one purpose. And that's to die on that cross. He became one of us. 
in order that we might have life. He died in order that we might have life and have it more abundant. Do you have enough of intestinal fortitude to get out of that seat and come down here and say, pray for me, preacher? I want to know that I am a child of God. I don't care how many times you tried and failed. Get out of your seat and come. We're going to pray for you right now. This is the beginning. You can't get the Holy Ghost first. You got to get saved first. Come on down here. Come down here, girls. God bless you. Come on, son. God bless you. Come, Come on down here. Sing it. That see a If you ever need a miracle, dial a 24-hour-a-day prayer, man personally, by our students in, in, the, in the Bible College. Here it is, power phone, 214, area 894-6141. Now let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I believe everybody know what they want. The faith of God is coming alive as you stretch forth your nail-scarred hand of Calvary. I come against sin, sickness, disease, infirmity, and poverty. Loose the people and let them go in Jesus' name. That's it, my friend. Re rejoice and give God praise. Then write me a letter of testimony along with your generous offering of support to keep the voice of power on the air. My mailing address is R.W. Shambach, Elwood City, Pennsylvania. The zip code is 16117. I'll repeat that in one minute's time, but here's a very important announcement. We'll be in St. Louis, Missouri this coming Wednesday and Thursday, March 25 and 26, at the Machinist Hall on St. Charles Rock Road in Bridgeton. Next Sunday, we're going to be in Detroit, Michigan for four great services. That's March 29, 20, 29, 30, 31, and April 1st in the Cobo Hall, the only service on Sunday and the opening service Sunday at 2.30 p.m. I'll be in Chicago, Illinois, April 3, 4, and 5 at Miracle Temple, 79th and Stony Island. Mark this on your calendar the whole month of May. The brand new gospel tent will be up in Dallas, Texas for an international camp meeting. Three great services a daily. Great men of God coming from all over the nation to share the pulpit. Dr. Gray, Brother Bert Clinton Denon from Beaumont, John Wesley Fletcher, Brian Rudd, Little Richard, and our teachers from the Bible College in Tyler. Plan to attend. Come early for a good seat. Share a miracle the whole month of May in Dallas, Texas under the big gospel tent. Now, when you write, don't forget to request Power Magazine. Send your generous offering of support. My mailing address is R.W. Shambach, Elwood City, Pennsylvania. That's R.W. Shambach, Elwood City, Pennsylvania, and the zip code is 16117. God bless your heart. This broadcast is sponsored by Shambach Revivals Incorporated and my power partners in this.